I don't call myself a refugee, but my family moved to Turkey now. I'm working for Istanbul Sabah Zeyn University. <coughs> so we are in the process to settle down in Turkey. Today we are going to speak about another issue, meritocratic identity and meritocratic discourse. So we'll try to find out who is a meritocrat, how does merit connect with their uh, income, profit, intelligence, and so on. The current research project attempts to extend the existing discourses of difference, tradition, to research in other body-based system of social categorization, meritocratic identity in terms of meritocratic discourse. So what is meritocracy? Our new dictionary of cultural literacy defines meritocracy as a government or a society in which citizens who display superior achievement are rewarded with positions of leadership. In a meritocracy, all citizens have the opportunity to be recognized and advanced in proportion to their abilities and accomplishments. It sounds a little bit like utopia, but it exists, so we'll find out if it's, if it's like this. The idea of meritocracy is a social system in which merit or talent is the basis for sorting people into positions and distributing rewards has received great attention since the term was coined out by Michael Young in 1958 in his book, The Rise of Meritocracy. So uh, Michael Young defines merit as an individual characteristic constituting of intelligence and effort. So as a result, we have meritocratic society or meritocratic discourse. But then a problem with the merit definition arises. Machnem and Miller think that an individual merit is generally viewed as a combination of factors, including innate abilities, working hard, having the right attitude, and having high moral character and integrity. But when factors associated with individual merit are related to income and wealth, it turns out that these factors are often not uniquely individual, or as influential as many presume. So, another question, is merit equal to intelligence? Some experts point out that intelligence, as measured by IQ tests, in is particular reflection of inherent intellectual capacity and partially a reflection of environmental influences. Even allowing for this environmental caveat, IQ scores only account for about 10% of the variance in income differences among individuals. So, does working hard means you apply your talent and the result you have married and then higher incomes? Like none of these measures of hard work and talent is directly associated with economic success, unfortunately. In fact, those who work the most hours and expend the most effort are often the most poorly paid in this society. So, is honesty means or equal to merit? McNamee Mac, uh, and Miller challenged the idea that moral character and integrity are important contributors to economic success and meritocracy. But what about alleged corporate ethics scandals in such corporations as Admiral WorldCom, Bristol Myers, Squibb, and so on? So we face white collar crimes. So still there are many advocates of meritocracy. They uh, try to point out that in true meritocratic systems, everyone has equal chance to advance and obtain rewards based on the individual merits and efforts, regardless of the agenda, race, class, and other non-merit factors. 
In the United States, for example, the way researchers we analyzed 42 reports in the database for our research repeatedly revealed that Americans endorse their meritocratic thesis and most believe that meritocracy is not the way the system should work, but the way it works. Here is this scheme designed by Anna Zimmers, and it, it is mapping the theoretical uh, normative working of the meritocracy by showing the relationship between social origin, ability, effort, merit, and outcomes. So everything is like connected, and uh, origin doesn't play so so important role as your effort and then endowed ability and developed ability, and then as a result, you have a very good outcome. So, uh, finding out the key issues concerning the uh, term meritocrat, the definition of the term meritocrat is ambiguous and contingent. So who is he, what is he? Critical discourse analysis has been used to study uh, social identity because meritocrat identity reproduces and sustains power relationships between different social groups. Uh, through discursive strategies of group definition and differentiation, meritocrat identity is constructed through positioning relation to other groups. Meritocratic discourse, like any discourse, is always connected with one's own identity, that is to say, with the question, how do we see ourselves? Uh, so, meritocratic discourse constructs social identity of meritocrat by defining groups, uh, groups' interests, their position within society, and their relationship to other groups. Social identity acts as an interpretive frame for social action by indicating to people what they should think about or a particular issue or group of people. And it functions as a mechanism through which collective group interests are played out in social practices of individuals. Language users engaged in text and talk not just as individuals but also as members of multiple social categories and they construct and accomplish uh, these social identities in this course. However, such constructions are never fixed or stable as they are the outcome of a complex and contradictory, contradictory interplay of these courses. Social identity of meritocrats may be fragmented, ambiguous, and subject to continuous reproduction through political, social, and discursive processes. So, uh, based on our investigations, and so these are the uh, pilot conclusions about who are the meritocrats. Sometimes they are not so positive, uh, coming back to their uh, surveys conducted in the United States. Meritocrats are recognized as increasingly heterogeneous with substantial differences in socioeconomic status employment patterns and stability, educa stability education, ethnicity and gender. Meritocrats pull up their energy into working hard and getting the right answers to the questions at hand, and unfortunately no energy into acquiring the power to implement those answers. Meritocrats are good corporate citizens, but often end up by being eaten by co-workers who are more politically savvy and power-oriented. Meritocrats are usually less effective than they might be because they fail to persuade people of the value of their ideas. They may even pride themselves on their refusal, refusal to sully themselves by playing politics. In the worst case scenario, they are the people who are let go in a downsizing because they haven't developed and maintained a contact network that would help upper management to see their value. They also have a more difficult time finding new work for the same reason. This is a very common and very dangerous problem, problem for narrative press. Thank you very much. So, like as a conclusion, 
Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, the idea of meritocratic society and uh, meritocrats it was highly praised even five years before, five, eight years, but what the recent researchers say, so uh, the American society is not a meritocratic society. So the surveys claim that they are. So, and I'm sure there are many meritocrats among us. <laughs> is it supposed to be a compliment or what? No, <laughs> it's a compliment, but, <laughs> but for us, sometimes it's very difficult to survive. It's difficult to live with already. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Questions about I have a question. Uh, for your service, who did you interview? Uh, okay, so uh, we used the ready-made surveys conducted uh, by the uh, survey associations in the United States. And uh, we studied, so it's just the beginning of the pilot study. Uh -huh. So we also interviewed uh, academicians from the Ukrainian universities because the second part uh, of our study we are planning uh, to do concerning gender issues and meritocratic discourse, uh, namely the role of female academicians in meritocratic universities, if they do exist. So we try to find out. So the data collected from these sources. And within Ukraine, you were doing this So the first part uh, was done in the United States, the second in Ukraine, now I try to do it in Turkey. Uh -huh female academicians in the Turkish society, like Turkish meritocratic universities, if they do exist. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, maybe I, I missed something. I think I have not yet collected everything you presented. Um, so you said meritocrat is someone who works hard. Or yes. Less, and in the end, you presented the results that they seem so, to be they seem to be weak and they like, uh, no but you like, know unfortunately in market oriented societies people who work hard like who are talented no, but isn't, isn't, isn't this isn't this idea of merit, merit, meritocracy meritocracy um, isn't it excluding your social background i mean sometimes you just live in a country or in a region or your social background or your religious background matter so much that no matter how hard you work, you will always fail. And then, I mean, this is, I haven't seen that in, in, in your presentation. No, I don't think so. It is influenced by the religious background or their social background. No, so, I see that it's not included in this, in this, in this concept, but I think so it's... So we're in the process because it's just the pilot study, so we're trying. So. We tried firstly to analyze the general situation of the meritocratic society, the notion of meritocracy, and then we moved now a bit to another thing. Meritocratic education and the meritocratic uh, relations. I have another question too, uh, still um, in the US, a uh, problem. Um, isn't meritocracy, in my understanding, an ideology? Yeah, to legitimate uh, social inequality. And how I'm understanding you, you know, saying meritocracy exists, and you are trying to to find how it does it exist. Yeah, it's true. We are trying to find out where and how it exists. Because, for example, according to the American surveys, it exists in the United States. But I lived there for a while, so I didn't see. Yeah, because it's just my theology, I think. Yes. So, but we try to find out in which way it exists, how it works, so if it still exists in this society. Yeah, and so you interviewed, you took interviews of 42 Americans? No, for 42 surveys. 42 surveys. And based yeah. on that, you decided that Americans were using yes. their Yes. And you wouldn't just call them suckers? <laughs> no. I mean, as, as you said, right, this is just ideology when, uh, you know, I mean, people are not born behind the veil of ignorance. As no, well as the light yeah, and so once, so once you know that, you know, you, you, know that uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, you can't uh, build a theory 
is based on it unless you include uh, you know these ideological components. It's I mean, these social control. Okay, so we will proceed in our researchers, but that is like um, an ideal understanding of the meritocratic idea, meritocratic society. But of course, it changes due to, to many reasons. Of course, politics influences, and then the um, are maybe the economic uh, development of the country influences. So I don't call them this word which you said. I don't want to repeat it because I didn't mean it. <laughs> we are not failures. Um, yes. uh, I'd like to, to add to this a little bit. I was wondering if you um, deal with, I think meritocracy definitely needs some, yeah, it's something to be critiqued and, you know, uh, in terms of social and economic political organization. But I wonder whether to call like specific actors meritocrats because based on their degree of success may conflate basically uh, meritocracy as a system of organization, as not ideology, as a system of rewards basically. Yeah? Yes. Um, with, you know, um, with meritocracy, I mean, a meritocrat would basically be someone who proposes that system, I would think. You know, or supports a system as, as it's an ideological position, I would say. And in that respect, it seems to me a little bit difficult to say whether a specific institution or a specific actor is a yes or not a meritocrat um, in consequence of his or her success. And I wonder whether there's a tension between these two uses of the meritocrats, which creates some confusion here. Okay, so uh, we're just at the very beginning, so I will take into consideration your remarks and then we'll, we'll in, include in our investigation. Yeah, you're right, like, we cannot arrive to certain conclusions based on a couple of surveys or uh, using the data from about one university or one institution. <laughs> Okay, one, one last question. No, no, it's, it's, it's a very good discussion. Yeah, it's nice. I'm just saying that you cannot name someone a meritocrat because you said you didn't see anyone somewhere. But I I'm a meritocrat. Yeah, that's, that's the first time. I feel like the this. The person who says that this person is a meritocrat is a meritocrat. But I wouldn't like to be named as a meritocrat. Okay, I think this, you know this is I mean? more of a discussion. Yeah, than so than because. Than no, so it's, 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 very, it's very important, I think, in terms of... I didn't name anybody, body, like, but like the, unfortunately, modern societies, people who work hard are not always highly praised. So if you think like that it's a bad to be named meritocrat, so it's your personal point of view. I'm afraid it's all about justification of this concept, basic concepts of uh, what is meritocrat, what is meritocracy. And just to, to to just to finish it up, I mean we we are pressed for time because we our session has to, to finish up at seven seventeen twenty instead of eighteen thirty five. Just a, a very short question uh, because uh, your your paper is titled meritocratic identity and meritocratic discourse and um, so the discussion centered on meritocracy. But I'm I'm wondering. Uh, what is meritocratic discourse? Is it discourse about meritocrats or is it discourse by meritocrats? So how would we define it in terms of such? Okay, so uh, meritocratic discourse, so that is how meritocrats uh, define in the social, in different types of social discourses. So how they are defined? Yes, defined, yes. represented in media discourse, in education discourse, and so on. So then I wonder what would be linguistic markers of meritocratic discourse if you are searching, uh, if you are looking for this information. So what would you, what would you be looking for? Rich, uh, successful, what, what, what linguistic markers? What are linguistic okay, markers? Okay, so we are still in the process, like if they are rich, successful, unsuccessful, so the process is like this of the investigation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, our next speaker is going to be Justina Rzyzinska, a PhD student from Kelsey University.